we are on the precipice of reaching a power no Shinigami, human, or hollow could ever reach. We have transcended to a new height. Yes, we have done it. We have reached 1,000 subscribers. Hey guys, Sterling here, and you saw that right. Yes, guys, we have achieved 1,000 subs. So in honor of that, and in honor of you guys, we are going to explore and discuss one of our most epic what-if stories to date. What if Sosuke Aizen invaded the royal palace? Now, I had planned on doing an entirely different video for today, but with the events of the finale of Core 2 of the Bleach Thousand Year Blood War, I couldn't wait to tell a story involving the new and improved Squad Zero. And what better way to do that than throw one of Bleach's most powerful monstrosities, Sosuke Aizen, at the protectors of God himself. Now, a lot of you might write this video off right away, especially after what's revealed in the latest episodes of the Thousand Year Blood War. You might say something like, oh, Aizen loses right away. There's no way he beats Squad Zero. But it's not that simple, and guys, where's the fun in that? So yes, we're going to talk about how he could actually combat Squad Zero, but not just that, more so I want to tell a story exploring all of Squad Zero, the members, their Bonkais, how would they interact with Aizen, how Aizen would interact with them, maybe even talk further evolutions for Aizen, and maybe even speculate on what his Bonkai could be. There's so much fun to be had with a hypothetical scenario such as this. This also gives us the chance to discuss the latest episodes of Bleach as well. I cannot wait to get into this one, but first guys, as always, don't forget to slash that like button, slash that subscribe button, and as always, if you have an idea for a Bleach What If, tell me in the comments below. I'd love to turn your idea into a fun What If story. All our videos have come from ideas you guys have come up with, and I'm so excited extremely proud of that. So without further ado, let's get right into this. So as far as the setup for this one, we need Aizen to win the final battle against Ichigo. This doesn't necessarily mean we have to change much though. Ichigo can still use the final Getsuga Tensho and still semi take Aizen down. What we are going to tweak here is Kisuke's seal. We are going to say that that Kido isn't successful in sealing Aizen. He defeats Kisuke and Ichigo and makes his way to the royal palace. Now, for the sake of the what if, we are going to say Aizen successfully creates an Oaken. Now, guys, I'm aware that the Oaken are the bones of the royal guard. But, guys, for the sake of this what if and for the sake of fun, we're just going to go ahead and insert a little bit of headcanon here and go ahead and say that Aizen was able to create some sort of key, some sort of Oaken, so he could get to Squad Zero. So now that we have our setup out of the way and we have a further evolved Aizen barreling towards the Royal Palace, we can now finally start our story. So as always, set back and let me paint you a picture. The heavens begin to scream as Sosuke Aizen makes his way through the 72 barriers that protect the stronghold of God himself. With his control of the Hogyoku, Aizen was successful in transforming his newly created Oaken into a golden cradle that he was now using as a vehicle of destruction. That combined with his godlike speed rendered the once mighty bar barriers no more useful than your average window. Pain. After breaking through the final barrier, Aizen finally does it. He steps foot into the royal palace, where he is immediately greeted by four members of Squad Zero and a small battalion of Royal Guard foot soldiers. <laughs> oh man, oh man. The Gote must really be slipping if they let a dude like you get this far. Five, four, three, two, my name is Oetsu, and I am the number one Zanpakuto creator, you dig? And we're the officers of Squad Zero. A child like you should show more respect. Aizen, standing tall, waves his hand as if unsheathing an invisible sword and begins to speak. You call me a child, yet there you stand, just a Shinigami? You all protect that thing as if you were loyal sons and daughters. And here I stand, a transcendent being, 
So tell me, Squad Zero, who truly appears childish? I am at an evolution truly worthy of king. I alone will stand at the top. You will regret your arrogant ways, Shinjumaru the Great Seamstress declares to Aizen. Become rust on the Soul King's blade. Alright guys, there you have it. The stage has been set and the battle for the Soul Palace is beginning. I apologize for the horrible voice acting, but I really wanted to drive home how these characters would talk to each other. The Zero Division would be talking down to Aizen. He, of course, would clap back right away. I just think the interactions between these guys pre-battle would be pure bleach gold and I'm 100% here for it. You would have Zero Division probably having dialogue chastising Aizen for trying to rule above all. Meanwhile, you'd have Aizen calling them out as hypocrites probably saying something like, "You, yeah, but you say that, but here you five remain here above all, glorifying a single being. Anyways, I digress. I just think it would be a ton of fun to see them interact. Let's get back into the story. Dozens of Shinigami dressed in pitch black suits, somewhat resembling the Stealth Squad, race towards Aizen, blades in hand. But before they can even touch Sosuke, they are completely obliterated. Aizen's Ryatsu alone was enough to completely vaporize them out of existence. All of the Squad Zero members are shocked at what they just saw. Oetsu quickly reveals his unfinished Zanpakuto, a Zanpakuto so sharp there isn't a sheath that can contain it. He lunges towards Aizen but Sosuke teleports out of the way while simultaneously growing a grotesque, hollow-like face from his shoulder. The newly grown extension of Aizen's body opens its mouth and blasts Oetsu with a blast ten times stronger than the one he used to destroy the mountain range outside Kurakura Town. Oetsu dodges and attempts to slice Aizen once more, but Aizen yet again teleports out of the way. This continues for two more slashes. Oetsu and Aizen now stand face to face, and Aizen begins to laugh. Oetsu speaks up slightly out of breath. You know, if I wasn't slicing air, eh, yes, I could show you just how sharp this blade of mine is. So stand still, why don't you? Aizen laughs and says there'll be no need for that. I witnessed three times now just how magnificent that blade is. The same goes for your comrades. Oetsu looks over in shock to the area him and Aizen had been doing battle in and sees his three comrades with their stomachs slack. Alright guys, this story's just getting started, but I wanted to cut back in because what just happened here is Sosuke Aizen used his quick Asugetsu. So Oetsu was under an illusion. You see, the second that Aizen entered the Soul Palace, you remember when I mentioned that Aizen had waved his arm almost like he was unsheathing a blade? Well, right then and there, he put all four of the squad members near him into the Koyoka Sugetsu. So when Oetsu and Aizen were doing battle and Aizen was teleporting around and Oetsu had missed him three different times, well, those three times he had actually slashed his three comrades, the other members of the Zero Division. So anyways, you know Sosuke's going in there with a plan, so right off the bat, I'm sure that he would have activated his Koika Sugetsu. So of course, that was added into our What If story. Speaking of the story, let's get right back into it. Squad Zero, even though being slashed and injured, regroups and declares they will destroy Sosuke Aizen. But that's exactly what Aizen wanted. All of them weakened in one spot. Aizen then launches a full incantation, Hado 90, and traps all four members in a jet black coffin of death. Aizen turns his sights towards the main palace platform. He knows the true test is yet to come. He must take down the leader of the Zero Division, Ichibe Hasube. But before he can go any further, the entire palace begins to shake violently, almost as if all three realms were trembling. Almost simultaneously, Aizen's black coffin containing the four officers of Squad Zero shatters and out walks Oetsu with an overwhelming amount of Ryatsu flowing around him. His comrades behind him lay with their necks slashed. Oetsu turns to Sosuke and utters one word. Bonkai. 
Oh man, is this what if getting fun. Anyways, guys, what just happened here is the four members of Squad Zero were trapped in Aizen's black coffin, and they're like, all right, this isn't going to fly. We're Squad Zero. And right then and there, they do that ritual where they unlock the blood seal to unlock their true swords. And this time, instead of it being uh, Sinjin Maru, it's Oetsu, guys. I fell in love with Oetsu in the Thousand Year Blood War anime. In the manga, he wasn't always my favorite character, but the anime has painted him in such a good light. I love his character. So today in this What If, I thought that we could explore his Bonkai. Now, when I was writing this What If, it was hard for me to choose which member of Squad Zero's Bonkai we would explore. And like I said, I went with Oetsu. But can you imagine what the other members' Bonkais could be? Imagine Hikafune, for example. Her Bonkai could be a massive world tree she manifests. And I'm talking massive. She could control the limbs all Hashirama Senju style. That would be incredible to see. As far as Oetsu, Oetsu's Bonkai goes, I've come up with some really cool ideas, but I want to hear your guys' ideas in the comments below. My idea for Oetsu's Bonkai that he reveals to Aizen in this What If story would look something like this. Imagine Oetsu summons a massive army of Asayuchi. Big, small, you name it. He has an army of these things. But not just that. Imagine Oetsu has access to what I'm dubbing mythical forge beasts so he would have three beasts the first one could be mythical forge steel beast the second could be mythical forge fire beast and the third could be a mythical forge water beast so it would go along with the theme of him being a zompokto creator anyways these beasts would be absolute monstrosities with high amounts of riatsu this would be incredible to see these asayuchi would be attacking sosuke and the massive mythical beast would just be launching, like, steel attacks, water attacks, fire attacks. It would be an attack on a massive, massive scale. Very suitable for a member of Squad Zero. Anyways, guys, that's just the idea I went with. I would love to hear your guys' ideas in the comments below. I'm telling you, that is my favorite part about making these videos. So make sure you share your guys' ideas with me. Anyways, back into the story. Oetsu has summoned his massive army in three forge beasts and commands them to attack Aizen. Thousands of Asayuchi begin to race towards Aizen, crawling over the top of each other, resembling zombies, as they are all desperate to get a bite of Aizen's rich Riatsu. But that was their undoing. Aizen ramps his spiritual pressure to the max and begins to incinerate the Asayuchi. Oetsu continues to create more and more, and in an attempt to overwhelm Sosuke, the sword beasts begin to attack Aizen all at the same time. Their Riatsu output is insane. Aizen ramps up his Riatsu and screams, I won't be taken out like this! And the entire battlefield is engulfed in the clash of powers. There is no way to tell who won this exchange. A brief moment goes by and the dust settles and out of the rubble walks Sosuke Aizen. You see, this was all a part of Aizen's plan to further progress the Hogyoku. Witnessing the release of Oetsu's Bankai alone was enough to jumpstart the Hogyoku into another evolution. And then the way he pushed himself in battle against Oetsu's Bankai was enough to also progress the Hogyoku. Aizen as, is at an insane level right now. Anyways, Oetsu is still alive, obviously, but at this point, he knows the battle is over. It's time for him to let Ichibei step in and handle this. And guys, I'm starting to get really excited here, if you can't tell, because now we have a battle against Ichibei, a primordial being, and Aizen, a transcendent being. Now, if you thought the exchange between Aizen and the officers would be awesome, this conversation would be on a whole nother level. Ichibe would be looking down on Aizen so hard, and Aizen is definitely going to have some words for Ichibe. Aizen begins to explain that it was all part of his plan to fight the first four members first, and that Ichibe putting too much faith in the other members 
actually played right into Aizen's hands. You see, if Aizen was not immortal, Oetsu's Bankai would have destroyed him a thousand times over. But instead, it forced an even further evolution. The two titanic beings begin to clash. Ichibei summons a massive hand and attempts to knock Sosuke back down to Serete. But Sosuke teleports and begins to launch massive attacks at Ichibei. Ichibei releases Ichimonji and simply seals the attacks. Ichibei then fires back with a secret auto number three and a massive Ryatsu dragon barrels towards Aizen. He just narrowly dodges. His arm is destroyed in the blast, but he quickly uses high-speed regeneration to grow back his lost limb. Ichibei flash steps towards him with Ichimonji, hurling ink Aizen's direction. Aizen activates a Kido of his own, constructing a shield to block the ink. The shield, once hit with, Ichi once hit with Ichibei's ink, disappears, but saves Aizen from being hit. Ichibei suddenly stops and pauses for a moment. This game of tag is over, Sosuke Aizen. I will not entertain a child like you anymore. It's as if you think I'm a being of your level and can be fooled. I am aware that you've been using your fancy sword trick to change what I'm seeing, but you cannot hide your overwhelming amount of Ryatsu, Sosuke Aizen. I am also aware that you've made yourself immortal. Well, boy, you will be wishing for death soon enough. Secret Hotto number zero, Great King Seal. A gold Ryatsu cage forms around Aizen. Aizen attempts to escape, but it's too late. Ichibei has sealed Aizen. Ichibei looks at the cage Sosuke is trapped in and says, You wanted to rule up here forever, huh? Well, you had one thing, right? You will be up here forever and walks away, leaving Sosuke Aizen sealed. Oh man, guys, thanks for bearing with my terrible voice acting. But now to finish the rest of this story, I need your help. Because guys, this could go multiple different directions. As far as Sosuke Aizen's power at this point, and as far as the Hogyoku keep going through all these evolutions while he's fighting in Squad Zero, how do you guys think Sosuke Aizen would do against Squad Zero? Now, talking to you guys, there it's a mixed bag. Half of you think that with the new reveal of how strong the Zero Division is now, that they would have no problem taking down Sosuke Aizen. But then the other half of you say, no way, Tra Sosuke Aizen's still a tr transcendent being. He still has the Hogyoku. He would take down Squad Zero. So after reading all your guys' comments as far as in regards to how strong Aizen would be when he's going up against Squad Zero, I wanted to put together a story that made both of you guys happy. Because really, it's hard telling how this battle would actually go down. Like I said, I wanted to paint the best picture I could and tell the best picture I could, but I'm not really a Bleach power scaler. I just like to tell a great story. That's where you guys come in. Tell me, how do you think this battle would go? We've got Aizen who has complete hypnosis. Now, we're not sure how Ichibei would deal with that. Now, the complete hypnosis worked on a full power almighty Yuha, so you would think it would work on Ichibei. And not just that, but the Hogyoku is a piece of the Soul King. So a lot of people were saying that Ichibei could erase Aizen with his ink, but the argument to that would be, could he erase a Hogyoku Exorbed Aizen? I don't think that his ink would work on a piece of the Soul King. Now, that's just me. Like I said, there's so many different opinions out there. And like I said, I was just trying to tell a fun story. But guys, down in the comments below, I want to continue talking this battle. Because how do you think it would go? Do you think they would even be able to seal Aizen? Would the battle just continue to keep going? Going on. I mean, eventually, if Ichibei and Squad Zero didn't do something about Aizen, then yes, he would continue to get stronger and stronger, and eventually he may evolve into something that could take down the Zero Division. I mean, in my opinion, in terms of Ryatsu, Aizen is number one in Bleach. I mean, the dude is just known for his high, high amounts of Ryatsu. 
So as far as the zero member zero division members even touching him is that possible because we had a gene who is an extremely high tier captain try to touch eisen and was his arm was completely obliterated it may not have been his arm i'll have to go back and read but anyways what i'm getting at is no one was able to touch eisen like captain level beings could not touch eisen so here we have eisen fighting up in the soul palace and guys he's a transcendent being so could he take down shinigami i mean squad zero is strong but they're still just shinigami and sosuke boasts how he is a transcendent being anyways guys i could talk about this forever because as far as bleach power scaling goes in my opinion transcendent aizen and mugetsu ichigo they're reaching levels that were like soul king levels i mean maybe not that strong but like guys those two were titanic beings now anyways squad zero are also titanic beings and ichibe is a primordial being so of course in this what if i wasn't going to have ichibe get slapped around that would be disrespectful because he is one of the top tiers in bleach it's just my i kept thinking back to Aizen using Koikosugetsu on Almighty Soul King Yuha, and it actually worked, and it was one of the main reasons, along with the arrow and Uriyu's antithesis, that the heroes were even able to take down Yuha in the first place. So you cannot underestimate Sosuke Aizen. I cannot wait to see what they have in store for Sosuke in core three and four of the thousand year blood war anime guys it could it's going to be a while till it's back so we have a long time to talk but what we could see coming from aizen in the next course could be insane just like all the new stuff that we got to see from the zero division i cannot wait to talk about it guys we have a long time until core three comes out so that means we have plenty of what ifs plenty of stories to enjoy together and plenty of discussions to have together i cannot wait I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below, not only how this battle between Aizen and Squad Zero would go, but I want to know what do you think Oetsu's Bonkai would be? What do you think Hikifune's Bonkai would be? Guys, I want to know all your thoughts on Zero Division. I want to know what you thought of those episodes. Like I said, I just love talking Bleach. If you can't tell, guys, how enthusiastic I was while telling that story, I love talking Bleach. I think about it every every day and to be honest i think about you guys every day in this community we're building guys we are over a thousand strong and i wanted to do a video in honor of that so i hope you guys found this epic guys the future for this channel is so bright like i said once we start gaining a little traction I have friends in the animation industry and I would love to be able to pay them to create to bring these what ifs to life. So guys, imagine seeing an animated Sosuke Aizen fighting Squad Zero or any of our what ifs animated. Guys, that is the goal. We have talented voice actors, much better than myself like you heard today, ready and waiting. Like I said, this channel just needs to pick up a little bit of traction. So guys, if you enjoy these bleach what ifs if you enjoy this channel if you enjoy bleach then help me support bleach by helping support the channel share it with your friends share it with anyone you know share it on all social media platforms guys get the word out there that at anime bar tv we have a blast and we love talking our favorite things so guys until the next video it's been a blast i cannot believe there are over a thousand of us enjoying these videos weekly guys sorry that this one was a little bit late like i said with the latest episodes of the thousand year blood war i had had a different video planned and totally had to pivot because of the information that we were given and i couldn't have been any more excited about that because Zero Division finally got the shine that they deserved. I used to think that Sosuke would probably mop these guys up, but after watching those two episodes, as you can tell, I had a slightly different opinion. Now, obviously, I still think the battle would be Titanic, and I can't quite pin down 
exactly how it would go but like i said that's why i have you guys in the comments below anyways guys i'm starting to ramble on now i will see you in the next video guys i cannot wait have a great day it was Sosuke Aizen's plan that you watched this video until the end, and if you didn't notice, treachery started playing when the Schutstoffel was battling the Zero Division. Just kind of a little Aizen nod, anything badass happens and they're gonna play treachery. Anyways, it was all part of Aizen's plan. Everything is a part of Aizen's plan.